Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture to Power Switches This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuz Zare. The total losses in a power electronic system are given by this equation that means if you have n switches the switching loss in in the first switch is given by this equation which is basically consists of conduction loss plus switching loss and same for the second switch or the rest of switches plus we consider the extra loss associated with stray components and also another loss because of other components like uh, microcontroller, filter and so on so this is the total loss in a power electronic circuit which can help us to find the efficiency of the system now we can find an efficiency of a system based on input and output power and also based on the total losses so basically if this is input power coming to the system and if this is the total losses in a power electronic system so then this is the output power which is given by this equation and then we can say that efficiency is output power over input power so instead of output power we can write this equation and put it here and we can simplify into this equation because P in over P in is 1 and P loss over P in is written here so finally we can see that if we have no losses if the system is lossless then this portion this part is 0 and then we have maximum efficiency and this graph shows that when losses is increased actually the efficiency is decreased so it's quite important to understand the total losses and how to optimize and reduce in order to improve the efficiency of a power electronic system in a power converter high losses increase the junction temperature of power switches which may damage them if heat is not transferred to ambient so it may need a heat sink to transfer heat from junction into ambient which increase the cost size weight of the power converter so basically what's happened here when we have high losses that means we have high temperature so basically junction temperature if it's very high then we may need heat sink to transfer the heat from junction into ambient so in this case this component increase the cost size and weight of the power converter so if we can reduce the losses if we have high efficiency system then we can also reduce the size of system and also reduce the cost of the whole power electronic circuit now let's look at harmonics in power processing an input voltage or current is chopped based on a pulse pattern which generates a desired output voltage and or current waveform this process generates harmonic contents on the output waveform and or inject high frequency current into the input voltage source switching frequency and passive filters have a significant role in reducing the harmonic magnitude on both sides and we can classify them as load side that means if the output voltage is DC then we should consider the ripple magnitude the second case if the output voltage is AC on the load side we should consider the harmonic contents and THD or total harmonic distortion and if the input source is AC then we should consider the THD and power factor for example in this case if we have an AC to DC converter because of input current may be distorted by the load then in this case we inject significant harmonics into the system 
so that's why we should consider the input current and we have to reduce input current based on IEC standard in order to see the effects of the switching frequency on output voltage we can see these two voltage waveforms for example in this case the switching frequency is FSW1 and this switching cycle is greater than this switching cycle that means FSW1 is less than FSW2 so this voltage waveform, current waveform, or this circuit has higher switching frequency than this circuit. So in this case, let's look at the output ripple. For example, if we define this ripple on output current, so we can define this one as 2 delta I1. And here we can see that the ripple is much less than the other waveform so if this is 2 delta I2 then here we can see that by increasing the switching frequency we increase the switching losses but improve the quality so this is quite important to understand the effects of these issues for example you can see that by increasing the switching frequency so we increase the losses but improve the harmonics and also in some applications especially DC DC converters when we increase the switching frequency at the range of 50 or 60 kilohertz then we may also affect the EMI and the other case is that changing the switching time we may change the losses but we may also increase the EMI so it's quite important to understand these three factors and how we can control and we can optimize our design so in the previous slide we have found when the output voltage is DC how the switching frequency can affect the output ripple and also losses now let's consider in this slide if the output voltage is AC so how we can control the harmonics and THD so look at this current waveform and this current waveform so here you can see that the ripple is significant compared to this current waveform so here it looks like that we get almost a sine wave but here we have sine wave plus harmonics so a drawback is that this one has a high switching frequency compared to this circuit so the point is that by increasing the switching frequency we can reduce the harmonics and also reduce the total harmonic distortion but the drawback is that we may increase the switching losses now let's look at the input current waveforms in an AC DC converter when the AC is the grid and also the output is connected to a capacitor and resistor for example if you have a diode rectifier as AC DC converter so if the output is connected to a capacitor and resistor because capacitor can operate as a filter and provides better voltage for this resistive load but the point is that the input is connected to a grid voltage so now we can look at the current waveform so basically here you can see that the current waveform input current is not a sine wave that means this current has significant harmonics the reason is that over this time we charge the capacitor up to this peak value and then discharge it again so that's why the current waveform is not sine wave another possibility is using power factor correction circuit that means in this case we can shape the input current into a sine wave in phase with the voltage 
So the advantage is we can improve the quality. The advantage is we can reduce the harmonics. So when we are talking about harmonics, when the input is AC, so it's quite important to have a better current because otherwise we are not allowed to inject significant harmonic into the power system. We have considered losses and harmonics. Now let's consider the EMI, electromagnetic interference. So two major sources of EMI in power electronics are DVDT and the IDT. So basically when we switch on and switch off, we chop the DC voltage or DC current. That means we have significant the IDT and the VDT. So what's happened? Basically, if there is any stray capacitance over this switching time, when the switch is getting on or off, because of significant DVDT and because of stray capacitance in the circuit, so we have a leakage current which equals to stray capacitance times of DVDT. And the same scenario when we switch on and off so we may have significant DIDT because if you have different current loops when we switch on and switch off the current actually is increased and decreased and if there is any stray inductance associated with different current loops then we may have over voltage and that's because of stray inductance times of significant DIDT so what we can do, the best thing that we can do is to minimize and reduce the stray components because in this case we can have a better system, we can have a better layout and we can have a better efficiency. And the point is that there are some constraints on the IDT and DVDT. The point is that we cannot decrease or increase these factors easily because by changing the IDT we may change losses and in some cases we are not allowed to increase losses so if EMI is a big issue then we should consider this factor because this factor depends on the design how well we can design a layout which uh, topology we use and how we can optimize our design by having a better uh, layout and less stray components. For example here let's look at two different DVDT and DIDT. In this circuit when the switch is off when we apply gate signal at this time the voltage across the switch is decreasing that means the switch is getting on and the current through the switch is increasing that means the switch is getting on. So this is DVDT and this is the IDT. And if you look at this area, this area defines the switching losses associated with 10 on time and same scenario happens when the switch is getting off. So by decreasing the switching time by decreasing the switching time, it doesn't matter when the switch is getting on or off. That means we can control the losses. So if you look at this voltage and current waveforms, by decreasing the switching time here, what's happened, we can reduce the losses. But a drawback is that this DVDT is significant compared to this circuit or this voltage waveform. Same happens here, this DIDT is significant compared to this current waveform. So again we can see that is a trade-off between these factors. That means by decreasing or increasing the switching time we may change the losses. Power switches 
are the key parts of a power converter and they are classified based on the switching speed and power handling capabilities such as maximum blocking voltage and carrying current. In modern power converters, achieving high efficiency is a main concern and a key factor which saves energy in the converter. Achieving a high efficient converter is a very challenging and we need to compromise with other key factors such as quality and power density. It's apparent that increasing the switching time and decreasing the switching frequency decrease the total losses but main drawbacks are increasing EMI noise and reducing quality of the power converters due to increasing the ripple on the output voltage or current. The main challenge are to have a good understanding of EMI issues in power converters and layout to reduce EMI as low as possible without having extra passive components and in semiconductor manufacturing to develop a new generation of semiconductor devices to be able to operate at higher temperature to increase the capabilities of the converter with higher reliability. So what are the design steps? Suppose that we are going to design an AC drive system, AC motor drive system. So in this case we need a group of engineers, for example motor design engineers, control and hardware engineers, mechanical engineers, test and measurement group and finally EMI experts. So what are the key points? As we discussed that losses, harmonics and EMI are the key factors. So in this case we should optimize everything, we should reduce all of these issues at the beginning stage of a design. So when they design an, an electric machine they should actually find all the capacitive couplings between the windings, stator and rotor and in this case if there is a significant capacitive coupling EMI expert can help to reduce this capacitive coupling because what we get out of this one at the end we may have significant EMI. So if we consult and communicate with EMI expert in this case we can optimize our system because once we design an electric machine or transformer and once we actually design a controller and hardware for this design so it's not easy to reduce the EMI so in this case the only solution is to have a better layout and EMI filter but with communicating with other engineers especially EMI expert so what we can do we can look at the capacitive coupling and see if there is a significant capacitive coupling we can optimize the design and reduce the capacitive couplings. So the next group are control and hardware engineers so in this case they can find a good topology for that design, they can find a good pulse width modulation technique or define switching frequency and switching speed and also layout. So if there are some problems for example EMI problem or losses then we can consult with EMI expert then whether we can change the PWM technique or we can change the switching speed or we can change the switching frequency and also we can also work on the layout so in this stage the rest of engineers especially mechanical engineers and EMI expert can see if there is a thermal problem or EMI problem then we can work at this stage to improve the system. So the next group is mechanical engineers so in this case if there is a thermal problem if there are some problem associated with interconnection they can look at the system they may design heatsink and if you can't actually improve the losses or if you can't actually change the switching frequency because of other design issues such as harmonics then we may need to have a heatsink and also layout because of packaging because of other issues then we need to consider the layout and in this case if there are some problems especially when we design heatsink we need also look at the EMI because there are maybe some 
capacitive coupling in the system which may affect the system's performance. So in this case we may communicate with other engineers and see how we can improve the system. So finally when we finish the design we need to test and measure the system performance, some other key factors. If there are major problems we need to change for example some of the passive components especially filter and also layout. So in this case based on several tests and measurement we can see some of the problems. If there are main problems we may need to change some of the control issues or pulse fit modulation techniques or some of the um, algorithm and if there are some major issues in the test because of the structure of the system then we need we may need to communicate with mechanical engineers to improve the system or if there are some EMI problems then we need to communicate with EMI expert. So we like to improve the system at the beginning of stage because at this stage we like to have less problem because in this case that means we already designed the machine, we already designed the controller hardware, we already designed the uh, mechanical system, packaging, everything. So we don't like to have a major problem because if there is a major problem at this stage then we need to redesign again. So that's why if we communicate with each other at the beginning stage of a design we may have less problem at this stage.